scripture lesson today is taken from uh, Matthew's Gospel, the very first chapter, verses 18 through 25. If you'd like to follow along in the Pew Bible, it's on page 955. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will take his people, he will save his people from their sin. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's a dangerous thing when a pastor says, I'm going to speak just very briefly on this text. <laughs> You know, we don't hear too much about Joseph. We hear a lot about Jesus. We hear some about Mary, but we don't really hear too much about Joseph, Jesus' stepfather, so to speak. Uh, we hear a little bit here in Matthew's Gospel, a little bit more in Luke's Gospel. Um, but I want to spend just some time on, on these verses here. Just very, like I said, I don't want to speak briefly <clears throat> on these on these verses. Um, it wasn't uncommon. In fact, the the general practice was that uh, before a couple got married back in that day, they would spend a couple of years uh, betrothed to each other. And technically, from kind of a legal standpoint, they were married, um, but they wouldn't actually. Uh, be married until, you know, a couple of years down the road. And uh, so Joseph has become engaged to Mary, and uh, he's now in this predicament where his betrothed is expecting a child. Now, uh, Joseph is described here as a righteous man. Right, as a righteous man, he would have known what the law was of the land. He would have known what it was. And it was very severe. A woman who was found to be expecting out of wedlock, out of marriage, was to be taken from her father's home and stoned to death by the uh, village elders. That's pretty severe. That's what the law says. That's in our Bible. It's in Leviticus. And As a righteous man, Joseph would have understood the prevalent thought that the reason why the Israelites had lost the Holy Land and been forced out, and only some centuries before, but very, very soon before this, uh, had been allowed to come back in, was because they had forsaken the law. That's, that was their thoughts. They had forsaken God's law and they were punished and as a result lost the very promised land that was given to Abraham. That promise that was given to Abraham and fulfilled through Moses and Joshua. And so he's stuck. Because he really does care for Mary. He really does. That's evident here. He's, he's mauled it over in his mind as to what to do. He's, he's thinking about about what's going to happen to her, the public disgrace, the humiliation, not to mention the injury and even death that is awaiting her. And he's torn between, do I do what the law says, or do I 
just let anything go. You know, let anything fly. You know, it seems to be like a, an argument that we have these days between being so strict on things or being too lenient. And this is what is troubling Joseph. And he makes a decision finally. He's going to divorce her, but he's going to do it quietly. Both Mary and the baby will live, but Mary will not be his. And having made that decision, he then goes to sleep. But an angel of the Lord comes and says, don't be afraid to take her as your wife. I'll bet if that little town of Nazareth, like most little towns, there was probably a good deal of talk going around about Mary. <coughs> and maybe a few jokes being said about Joseph. But the angel reminds Jesus, or reminds Joseph rather, that he is to take care of this woman and this child. The child is special. There is a prophecy, and he remembers it. And so Joseph wakes up from this dream and does exactly what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. I imagine it's a very difficult thing to find yourself the parent, the father of a child who is not yours. But Joseph is a righteous man. He is a caring man. And an angel in this dream tells him to just trudge on ahead. And he does. And so he takes Mary home to be his wife. But he does something else. He names Jesus. Now, that's just a short little thing in here. Yes, the angel told him to do it. But in those days, when a father named the child, he was saying, this child is mine. And it doesn't matter what the little snickers and what the little gossip and all that other stuff was going on in the village, at that point in time, that child was his. Every bit as his, much his as it would have been had he had been the father, the actual father of the child. Joseph has a choice between being overly litigious, overly concerned with the law and the righteousness, and, and, and just letting anything fly, but he finds a third way. And that third way is not an easy way, but it's the way of love. And what we find in here is even though the evidence doesn't seem to point to, to doing this kind of a thing, even though the rules state that the outcome of this should be different, Je Joseph, with his faith, with his love, takes Mary to be not only his wife, but he also takes the child to be his son. And Jesus is adopted into the family of David. Brothers and sisters, through the love of God, not the law of God, not that anything goes that we sometimes hear, but because of the way of love, each <coughs> of us is adopted into the family. Willingly, joyfully, it's God's great intention that we be reunited with Him and at peace with ourselves, made whole, finding that missing piece of our lives, finding a source, a direction, and a true north, not as a wandering orphan, but as a full and legal heir, child of the living God. Joseph shows us 
that sometimes that way of love, which we are now called to take, can be difficult. But oh, the results. Oh, the results. God took a huge chance being born as a baby. Powerless, dependent, trusting. Joseph was faithful. May we be faithful too. In the name of the Father and the Son. We are now going to enjoy uh, a reminder. The Advent season, Christmas is about doing the service.